take down this ridge. Now it takes a lot of time to set this up because I'm just going to take away some flakes and I'm going to set up this ridge right here and I'm going to grind this. If I hit this sharp edge, it's just going to give way. But if I grind it, my antler will grab hold. That's going to be my second tool. My second tool is a piece of white-tailed deer antler and it's you can see I straightened it out as much as I could and then I'm going to hit that platform and drive off the flake down this ridge. What I'm going to do is hopefully we're going to have this platform, which is now below the imaginary center line. I'm going to hit right here and I want to drive a flake out somewhere out in here in order to start getting this limestone off the edge of this piece of plant. And I'll hit it very hard with the, with the deer antler and we'll see that the flake goes out there and takes off part of the limestone. So what I want to do is I want to work around this and take that limestone off. And that's what I'll do by taking flakes off back and forth. It's called the flip-flop method. And I work my way around this edge of flint and create places that I can build platforms on later. Now the reason I'm not grinding these platforms now is because I don't really want long flakes. I just want flakes that are going to give me a start right in the middle. So I'm going to take this, build a little platform here, another one here, and I'm going to take those flakes now while I still can, while there's still some mass. I'll take the end one first. You notice I'll uh, buttress it against my knee, take that flake. Now the next flake, it interrupted that and it made it sharp, so I have to dull that one again. And this one I want to do a finger pull again. I want to pull down that ridge and pull that flake. There we go. You, now this other one, I could take this one, but this one is concave. That flake is concave right there. I have to fix that. So I'll turn it over, take sharp flakes. Now it's convex. It doesn't take much, but my platform is above the center line. So I'm going to take flakes off, make the platform below the center line, then I turn it over. Now I lost about a half inch of length there, but I should be able to thin this pretty well with this one flake. I'm going to grind it. And then we'll do a finger pull on this one. I'll pull with my fingers underneath as I hit it. And drive that flake past the center line. If I try to take this flake with a flat surface like that on it, it's not going to go. But if I take this flake with a with a uh, boot surface on it, it'll go and it'll create another ridge for me to take another flake there. So I'll pull that one. Oop, I missed that one. I grind it again. If you hit them any time, every time, it wouldn't be any fun. There we go. So that took that flake. Now that sets me up for a much shorter flake here, but I have to brace it. So I'll brace it into my leg, take off some sharp flakes. There we go. Now we're starting to look pretty good on this side. But I have a problem here. I got this nice ridge I need to get rid of. A couple other things on the other side. I'm just going to come around and start shaping. I haven't made up my mind what kind of arrow point or knife I want to make out of this yet. That is a big advantage over what the ancient people did. They had to know what they were making right away. I have the advantage of saying, oh, I might make a Snyder point or I might make a Dalton point or whatever. But they had to fit the old handle that they had. And so they didn't have a choice on what type of point to make. That was the point that was in vogue at that time. And that was the one they needed to make. But I have the choice myself of taking whatever I want out of it. So that was a preparation flake, even though it's a pretty good flake. It's still a preparation flake, so is that one. Now we're getting ready to remove some flakes off of this surface right here and off of this surface. This one is kind of bad. i got some bad spots in there. I'm going to try to prepare it a little more by flipping it over and making sure the surface is convex. There we go. So this is going to be a knife that's going to be used to cut through sinew and bone, or not bone, but uh, sinew and knuckles and tendons and things like that. And so I want something that's going to be extremely sturdy and yet uh, very sharp on the edges. So what I've done is I've taken my copper pressure flaker. I fashioned this one after a tool that I found in Hopewell Burial years ago with Northwestern University and it had a copper nail about that long in it 
with an amber handle, and the amber handle was missing from there down because the copper salts are the only thing that preserved it. And that nail and the, and the pressure plate, they were at 2,000 years ago. So I know that this is a good tool and it was used during that time period, and that's why I'd like to use it on this point. Plus, copper works a little easier than antler. If I use antler, which is used in the earlier times periods especially, I have to really, really set up every platform perfectly, whereas with copper, I can set up my platforms in a group like this and come right down the edge. Now, I've ground that pretty heavily. I need to grind it a little bit more. So I've got a grinding stone here, and I'll really make that dull so that when I turn it over, I'm pressing below the center line, and I'm pressing on less flint. And I'll put everything I've got into this. I'll press really hard and put everything I've got into it and then snap the flake off. And we'll try to get the flake to run in there. And then I'll turn it over each time to make sure that the flake came off. Now, this is also the Midwestern style of flint napping. This is the way that I was taught by Jim Spears. So we're gonna start taking out a few flakes. And I'm gonna turn it over just like we did before and I might even grind that a little bit. And then we'll take off another flake inward. Another one next to that. And what a nice rounded flake or notch. Then I'll turn it over, take another one. Turn it over, take another group. Okay, now we'll take the notch on the other side. And my problem most of the time with my notches is my symmetry, so I have to be careful to start lining these things up and getting them right up about across from each other as I go. One of the things that I saw when I worked with Perino on a site where there were some Gibson points is uh, they were, there were some five Gibson points in, a, in the site and near the base of the, of the points were some dogfish teeth. And what the heck are those for? And uh, Drake said, well, if you look at the position of them, they were about two inches away from the, from the, uh, the point or the base of the point. And he said, what would you do with dogfish teeth like that? And I, and I said, I have no idea. They said, well, how about if you put them in a handle? And that's what they were doing. They were putting these dogfish teeth and then laying them into a handle that was on these knives. And uh, it's, simple, it's amazing how some little site like that in Central Illinois, you can find that out. Now, I'm going to thin the base a couple more times, make it easier to haft. And I'm going to take two flakes off. That's going to give me a median ridge to take a third flake. 